Albert Einstein once said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. The problem with the learning techniques most of us use, like highlighting, summarizing and rereading, is that although they feel intuitively productive, they are not very effective or useful in improving knowledge retention. This is a trap we have all fallen into at some point, I know I certainly have. Fortunately, this is where the Feynman technique can help. It wasn't his intelligence that made Feynman so brilliant. Rather, it was his systematic method of understanding, simplifying and explaining difficult concepts that contributed far more to his eventual success. If he didn't really understand something, he would push himself. Because he had pushed himself to have such a deep understanding, his ability to take you through the path of the different possibilities was incredible. This technique is based around the idea that one of the most effective techniques to enhance our understanding is to imagine that we are teaching the material to someone who has absolutely no idea about the topic, like a small child. By doing this, we force ourselves to explain our thoughts fully and avoid glossing over topics we don't understand well enough. The Feynman technique consists of four steps. So the first step is identifying the topic. The second step is teaching it to a child. The third step is identifying knowledge gaps. Fourth step is simplify. We will look at each of these steps in a turn. So first step is identifying the topic. Choose a topic we would like to test our knowledge and understanding on. So this can literally be any topic you want. My recommendation is to grab a piece of paper and write the topic clearly at the top of the page. Try not to pick a topic that's too broad, for example medicine, otherwise it's going to be impossible to do step 2 properly. So just identify a topic that's narrow enough to explain in no more than 5 minutes. Learning a smaller, more specific topic makes it far quicker to complete the four steps of the Feynman technique. So we are less likely to get bored or give up while learning or revising. And we face our weaknesses, so when we memorize it's easy for us to skip our things we don't enjoy. But by identifying our topic, we are facing our weaknesses and forced to confront what we don't know. The second step is to teach it to a child. It's important to remember that you are not teaching to your smart adult friend, but rather a child who has just enough vocabulary and attention span to understand basic concepts and relationships. It has to be simple and clear. Or for a different angle on the Feynman technique, you could place a rubber duck on your desk and try explaining the concept to it. Software engineers sometimes tackle debugging by explaining their code line by line to rubber duck. It sounds silly, but it's a forcing function to make you walk through your thinking as simply as possible. It turns out that one of the ways we mask our lack of understanding is by using complicated vocabulary and jargon. The truth is, if you can't clearly and simply define the words and terms you are using, you don't really know what you are talking about. The classic mistake is to treat learning as a passive process. Rereading and highlighting are particularly popular learning techniques, but they are largely ineffective because we are not actually engaging with the material in any meaningful way. Teaching, on the other hand, is an active method of learning that is far more effective. After all, we can't teach something without first understanding it properly. Okay, so we are going into the third step and that is identifying knowledge gaps. In step 3, we need to pinpoint the areas we found difficult to explain or had to return to our notes, textbooks to refresh our understanding. If we had to use any technical term in our explanation, we should challenge ourselves to break those terms into simpler components. If a child would struggle to understand us, we have found a knowledge gap that needs to be filled and simplified in step 4. The key is not only to identify complex areas of our own explanations, but also to challenge and identify where we have made assumptions based on what we already understand intuitively. A child won't intuitively know much about our topic, so we need to make sure our explanations strip things back to the basics. Ok, so the fourth step is to simplify. The final step of this technique is to rewrite our explanation of a topic in simpler terms. This often involves reorganizing our thoughts so the explanation flows more naturally. Finishing incomplete thoughts and finding simpler examples to break down complex ideas. This may take some time, 
or may have to be done multiple times to get it right. Understanding starts with simplicity. We don't understand something unless we can explain it simply. Using technical language or assuming our listener has an existing baseline of knowledge means we are probably relying on memorization rather than understanding. Second benefit is we build confidence. If we are able to teach someone a topic we previously found confusing, it boosts our confidence and encourages us to learn even more. So to sum things up, pick a topic and learn it so well that even your 10 year old cousin will understand it. Although it appears to be a simple technique, it is highly effective. In school, we memorize pretty much everything and quickly forget it all once we have finished our exams. But the Feynman technique goes much further, expecting us to prove our understanding of a given topic and clarifying our thoughts. If we want to learn more effectively and deepen our understanding of a topic, there is a really no better method than the Feynman technique. Every student should add it to their armory of revision tools. In fact, every learner should leverage it to enhance understanding, increase productivity, and improve performance. Hope this helped you guys, and see ya in the next video.